So a factor is a number or quantity that when multiplied with another produces a given number in or expression. So um, this is best understood with an example. So let's say I have two times three. So two times three equals six. So we call two and three factors of six. They basically can be multiplied together to get to six. Another way to think about it are, are factors are things that can divide into your overall numbers. So factors of six could be one, could be two, could be three, and could be six. They all divide into six and don't have any remainder, basically. So that's another way to think about a factor is think of it as what you can divide out, which is the most common way to think about factors. So um, we can just list all of these. Because, um, let's see, so those are all factors of 6. So because like 1 times 6 gets you 6, 2 times 3 gets you 6. So it's like every combination that you can do to multiply, the numbers that make up that are considered factors. Um, so that's when we have numbers. When we have things with variables, it's the same sort of definition. So if I have 2x squared times 5x cubed. So when you multiply that out, that is 10x to the fifth. So the 2x squared and the 5 cubed, those are factors of 10x to the fifth. It's a lot harder once you have variables to kind of list all of the possible factors. So we only usually list possible factors in all of them when it's a number, if you have things with variables, we don't really look at it the same way because there's lots of combinations of the number and the variable and all the different ways you can get to that. Now, the greatest common factor, and we're going to first focus on numbers or integers. So we don't talk about greatest common factor if we have uh, fractions or decimals, although we could do this with fractions. It's just a lot harder. So we usually look at it with whole numbers, positive or negative, so integers. So the greatest common factor is the largest factor that's in common if you have a set of numbers. So that's what we, it's the greatest factor in common. So it's sort of literal in the name. So the way I think about it is the biggest number that I can divide out evenly out of a list of numbers. So if I'm given two numbers, 5 and 15, the greatest common factor is the biggest number that divides into both of those numbers. And so in this case, that would be 5. And so I abbreviated GCF, and that would be equal to 5. 5 is the biggest number I can divide into 5. And then because it has to be in common, that's also the biggest one that divides into 15. So you can think of this, you can figure it out by just listing all the factors and then looking to see which one is in common. So if I do factors of 5 and factors of 15, so the factors of 5, the only things that multiply to 5 and 1, 5, because 5 is prime. And then 15, we can divide 15 by 1, 3, 5, and 15. And so the one that's in common, the biggest one that's in common, oh, that was supposed to be a highlight. <laughs> that was not what I, let's try that again. I thought I had clicked to the highlighter. Uh, I have to rewrite my five. So there we go, highlighter. So the biggest one in common is five. So you can find it by listing all the factors and then just looking for the larger one. Um, if we have another example, 24 and 16. So a lot of this I do mentally. I think, okay, what is the largest number I can divide into though? And when I look at 24 and 16, I'm like, oh, four goes into both. But that is actually not the greatest one because I can divide both of those by eight because eight and eight is larger than four. So the GCF here is equal to 8. So you're trying to find the biggest one. 
And so sometimes the first one you think of is not actually the largest. And so it, it helps if you know your multiplication tables really well. If you know your multiplication well, you, then you can do this mentally without having to write down all the factors and use a calculator. So it's actually much faster um, to try to do this mentally and to know your times tables, at least up to tens. Um, if you can, if you know your times from one through ten, and you can do those in your head, then finding the greatest common factor is usually fairly quick. My last example here is seventeen and thirty. So seventeen is a prime number, which means that the only thing that divides evenly into it is one in itself. So that'd be one in seventeen. Um, and 1 divides into 30, but 17 does not divide into 30. So in this case, our greatest common factor is 1. The only thing we can divide out of both of those numbers is 1. There's nothing else in common. And so that is the greatest common factor. Prime factorization. This is what I use if I have numbers that are big and I don't know what goes into them. So if it's a number that is, you know, below 100, I know my times tables. I can figure out the GCF, but if I don't, I use prime factorization. And I'm going to show how you use prime factorization to find the GCF because it may not be, it's, it's kind of a cool process. So I've got one example here. I've got 54 and 360. And so I'm going to make factor trees for both of those. Um, so 54 I know is 9 times 6. And you, you can't see me on camera, but I am the kind, even though I, I know math, when it comes to the nines, I use the number, the finger trick, where um, nine, five, yeah, nine times six is 54. It's like, <laughs> you can actually do nines on your hand. Actually, let me show this. Let me quickly stop sharing so you can see this. Because <laughs> you may not know the nine, the trick with the nine. So, if, if you want nine times one, you put down the first finger, and hopefully this is a mirror image, so you see nine left, so nine times one is nine. Nine times two is one and eight, so 18. Nine times three is 27. So I do that, and I'm like, okay, I know I need 54, so if I need to get five, I put down this, I'm like, okay, it's nine times six is 54. So the nines are really cool with that. Um, I, for, for some reason, multiplying nines are really hard in my hand. I always use my fingers. So, um, I'll go back to sharing just to show you that little trick. So, okay, so 54 is 9 times 6, and 9 is 3 times 3, and 3, those are prime numbers. And then 6 is 2 times 3, and 2 is prime, and 3 is prime. So you want to get them down as far as they can go. So 54 is 2 times 3 to the third power. 360 is 36 times 10. And you can make your tree any way you want. Um, so sometimes, you know, maybe 30, it's not 36 times 10 that makes sense to you for the first to break it up. Um, but that's what works for me. And then 36 is 6, 6. And then 6 is 2 times 3. And I always circle my prime numbers so I know that I'm done. And then 10 is 2 times 5. So 36, I've got three 2s there. So that's 2 to the 3rd times 3 squared times 5. So to find the greatest common factor, you can highlight everything that's in common. So I've got a 2 in common here in both of those. And then I've got a 3 and a 3. And then another 3 and a 3. And then they don't have anything else in common. So you take everything that was in common, and that is your GCF. So I've got a 2 times a 3 times a 3. So that's 6 times 3, which is 18. So the greatest common factor is 18 for 54 and 360, which is not something that I would have been able to figure out mentally. 
Now I want to also demonstrate when I'm looking at the prime factorization here. So when I wrote the prime factorization, we have a single two. So when I'm comparing, if I'm looking at the prime factorization, I have two and two to the third. So the two, the lowest exponent part was there. And then I have a three to the third and a three squared. Three squared has a smaller exponent. So then I have the three squared. And then I have five to the zero. Basically, there is no five and then a five. So I don't have a five in my GCF. So you can think of the GCF as basically taking the smallest exponent from the prime factorization. So you can do the prime factorization and you can either highlight from the tree or you can take the smallest exponent to create your GCF. This is a, a technique that not um, a lot of people are taught how to do it like, you know, just keep dividing numbers until you find the biggest one. Um, this is how I teach it because I fi find prime factorization very useful in a lot of different um, areas. It shows it's more work to like do all this stuff, but then once you have it down, you have the right answer. And I'm showing the the exponent part because that's what we do when we have variables. So when you have you're looking for a GCF of variable expressions, it you take the one with the smallest exponent. And so if I have x to the fifth and x squared then my GCF is going to be x squared because that's the smallest exponent. So I show the prime factorization because it's the same rule when you have numbers as you, you take the smallest exponent out of the things in common. So another example, if I have more than one variable, so I say I have x squared y and then x y cubed, you look each variable by variable. So out of the x's, the smallest would be x. That exponent is 1. And then out of the y, the smallest would be a y, which has an exponent of 1. So you look at it like piece by piece. You look at the x's, and then you look at the y, and you take the smallest exponent. It's just like how here we looked at the twos and then we looked at the threes and then we looked at the fives and we took the smallest exponent to get our GCF. Um, now you can have things with binomial expressions. So an example of that would be like x plus 2 and x plus 2 cubed. So um, you still look at the smallest exponent but you look at it as the the set of the expression together because they're in parentheses and so we're considering those grouped together so they both have an x plus two in common and so then the smallest exponent would be just x plus two since that has an exponent of one so they both have x plus two in common just the second set has three of them while the first one has only one of them so that's the rule of variable expressions, and it's following basically the same rule from numbers. I'm going to just do some examples where we're combining the numbers, the variables, and all that, so you have an idea of how this works. If the numbers are under 100, I generally don't do a factor tree. If it's over 100, I'll do a factor tree. So um, we've got 2x cubed and 17. So first I look at the numbers, and I say, is there a number in common that I can divide out of both? 2 is prime, 17 is prime. So they don't have any number in common that I can divide out other than 1. So I'm going to have a 1. And then I look at the variables. I have an x cubed, and then I have something without x. So if there's no x, that's an exponent of 0. So that means there's going to be no x in my answer because they don't even have an x in common. So for my first example here, they have nothing in common. Your GCF is 1. When that happens, it is called, they are called prime, or relatively prime, because they don't have anything in common, so they are prime with each other. Now the second example... I've got 12w cubed z and 16w squared z. So I'm first going to look at the numbers. The larger I can divide out of 12 and 16. So that is 4. 
So I know that my GCF is going to have four. Now I look at my W, I take the smallest exponent, so that's going to be W squared. And then the Z's have the same exponent, so I can take a Z. And so that means my GCF is going to be 4 W squared Z. Now, these examples, I've got on the left three different things, and it's the same thing. So I'm going to be looking at the number first to find the GCF. 3, negative 6, and 9. So if the negative is the first set of numbers, our GCF is usually negative. But in this case, the negative is the second set, so we're going to have a positive GCF. And so we just need to look at the numbers 3, 6, and 9 to see what they have in common. Um, and the largest number in common is 3. So my GCF is going to start with a 3. And then I've got a z cubed, a z squared, and a z. So z is exponent of 1. That's the smallest out of one, 3, 2, and 1. So my GCF is going to be 3z. Well, the second one here, I've got binomial expression. So if I'm looking at the numbers, there's no number in front of the x plus 3 squared. So we can consider that a 1. So out of 1 and 4, the only have common is 1. And then I have an x plus 3 squared and x plus 3. So the x plus 3, which has no exponent, is the smallest exponent there. And so my GCF would be 1 times x plus 3, which you can also just say is x plus 3. You don't really need that 1 there. So the 1 was there because... I have, basically, if there's no number in front of the x plus 3 squared, you can think of it as having a 1. And then when you're comparing the 1 to the 4, 1 is the biggest thing you can divide. Because generally when we're factoring, which will be what I'm going to be doing next, um, we like to have positive things in front. And so to get that, we will factor out a negative to make everything else start with that positive. And it just makes our life easier for everything that we have to factor with. So it's just, I mean, you can work with having a negative, but life is so much easier if there's a positive. And so we factor out a negative to make things positive. Okay, so factoring out the GCF. So now that we know how to find the GCF, we're going to start by factoring that out. And so to factor out the GCF, you follow these steps. First, you have to figure out what it is, identify what do they have in common. And now, the so there are two different ways to show or to factor out the G GCF. Um, some books make you rewrite your expression as factors, like we did at the very beginning, like 2 times 3 equals 6. So instead of writing 6, you'd write 2 times 3. Um, and then use reverse, the, basically reverse the distributive property. I find that way confusing. So this is how I show it. And um, so basically you rewrite your expression so that you have the greatest common factor in front. And then in parentheses, you take each thing that you had. So those are the terms. And then you divide each one by the GCF. Because factoring basically means we're dividing out the common factor. We are allowed to do this because of the rule. If I have a number multiplied by fractions, if the, top, the number, the GCF, and then if GCF is in the denominator, those would cancel out. So I'm not actually changing anything. I'm just rewriting it so that it's in a way that we can do things with later. Um, so this is how I teach factoring out the GCF. Now, most of the time, I do it in my head. I don't show step two. Um, and I go basically down, to I do like step one and then step three. And I don't show step two. Um, because we do so much factoring in this class that you want to get to that point. You want to get to the point where you can do it in your head. Because we're, there's so much factoring going on that if you have to show that second step, that starts to really add to the number of steps. But because this is the first thing we're doing, I'm going to show those steps because you're probably, you're unlikely to be at that point yet. <laughs> 
So once you write step two, then you simplify the exponential expressions that are inside the parentheses. So that's the P.2, that process of simplifying exponents. So <clears throat> we're going to factor out the GCF, and now we've got polynomials. So um, this is where you actually start seeing the factoring processes when you have polynomials. So the first one we have 2x cubed minus 6x. So the first step is to figure out what the GCF is. So in this case, that minus 6x, I'm going to just ignore that negative and just look at 2 and 6. So the greatest number that I can divide out is 2. And then I have x cubed and x. So x is the smallest. So I've identified my GCF. Now to factor it out, I'm going to write my GCF in front. And then I take each term and divide it by the GCF. So I have 2x cubed divided by 2x minus 6x divided by 2x. So I rewrite that. And then we simplify inside the parentheses. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. And then you follow the rules of exponents where you subtract. So if there's an exponent of 1 because it's just a plain x, 3 minus 1 is 2. So I'm going to be left with just x squared. And then 6 divided by 2 is 3. And an x and an x, those cancel out to 0. So they're not present at all. So this is our factored um, polynomial. We have 2x. And then in parentheses, x squared minus 3. And so you can do that in your head once you get an idea of, you know, you understand the process, that you write your GCF in front, and then you divide it out of each term. So any questions on that first example? OK. See, I'm assuming that is, uh, yep, OK. So now the second example here, we have 3z cubed minus 6z squared plus 9z. We actually already found the GCF for, it was 3z. So I'm going to write 3z, and then I take each term and divide it by the GCF. And then we start canceling and dividing. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. Um, and then once again, I have a z cubed over a z. That's 3 minus 1. So we get a z squared minus three, 6 divided by 2. And then I, on the exponent, it would be 2 minus 1, which is just a single z. And then 9 divided by 3 is 3, and the z's cancel. So we end up with 3z times z squared minus 2z plus 3. And that's factoring out the GCF. Now this is not completely factored because this part in parentheses we can factor further. But I have not showed you how to do that yet. So we're going to just leave it as is for now because all we were to do was to factor out the GCF, but this would not be completely factored. Completely factored means you've taken the GCF out and then you've factored everything else as much as it can go. Okay, now here's an example with the binomial. So, um, the GCF here I need to identify. So first, I'm looking at the numbers. 3 and 8, they don't have anything in common that I can divide out. So it's just going to be a 1. And then I have an x and something without an x. So um, there's no x in common by itself. But we do have an x minus 5 in common. And so our GCF is x minus 5. 
So it's the same process. I'm going to write x minus 5 in front. And then in parentheses, I take each term and divide it by x minus 5. And this is where um, you really need to know your, your rules of exponents because you're like, oh my goodness, I've got all these things going on here. But basically, the x minus 5 and the x minus 5 cancel because their exponents are both 1, and 1 minus 1 is 0. And it's just following the same rules. We have an x minus 5 squared over an x minus 5. 2 minus 1 is 1. So I'm left with x minus 5 and then 3x plus 8 times x minus 5. It looks a little messy, but that we've factored out the GCF. Now usually what happens is then we simplify inside. So I have a 3x, and then I can distribute through the parentheses and combine like terms. So I don't have a lot of room here. So I'm going to just do that mentally. Otherwise, I would show that step. But if I distribute, I would get an 8x. 3x plus 8x is 11x. And then 8 times negative 5 is minus 40. So would factor. Or, and be fact, when we factor out the GCF and then simplify, you would get x minus 5 in front and then 11x minus 40. Now the next one, this is an example of where we would want to factor out that negative because the very first term is negative. So I'm immediately going to put a negative in front because if that first term is negative, I'm going to have a negative for my GCF. And now number-wise, I have 3, 6, and 3. So I can factor out a 3, but that's it because I have an n cubed and an n squared, but there's no n in my last term, so I can't divide that out. So my GCF here is just a number. It's just negative 3. So I have negative 3, and then I have 3n cubed over negative 3. And then because I have that minus and then I'm going to have another negative, I just find it easier in this case to turn that minus into adding negative because that way it's a little easier to see that the negatives cancel. And then 3, oops, I added an extra n. That's bad. Uh, negative 3. So I've got my negative 3 in front. And then a negative 3 divided by negative 3 is a positive 1. And we have nothing with the, the variables, so we're just dividing from the numbers. So I'm left with n cubed. And then negative 6 divided by negative 3 is a positive 2, so that's 2n squared. And then 3 divided by negative 3 is a negative 1, so that's minus 1. And so the whole reason we want to factor out that negative is because we really like to have when we have polynomials and things in parentheses like that, we really like to have this positive, that first term positive, because it makes things easier if it's a trinomial that we can factor. If it's like something you can factor further, it's just a lot easier to work with. So that's why we factor out that negative to make what's in parentheses start with a positive. So subtraction is the same thing as adding a negative. And so because I'm dividing by a negative, I decided to write it as adding a negative. So you can see clearly that those two negatives would cancel out. If I had left it as subtraction, let me show you what that would look like. You would have a minus and then 6 divided by negative 3. And then you would have a minus negative 2, which then you would have to then convert to a plus 2. So knowing that I was dividing by negative, whenever there's subtraction, I always turn it into adding a negative. So that way I don't have to deal with that little awkward subtracting a minus there. And it just makes the next step easier.